Hi there, Johnny here from johnnylipsomstudios.co.uk and welcome to this first of three standalone videos for Studio One 6. And in this video, we're gonna look at the new plugins that are now available in Studio One 6. So we are going to look at the de the new updates to Pro EQ, so that it is now gone from Pro EQ 2 to Pro EQ 3 which means we have some cool um, new features added to the Pro EQ. And we're also going to look at uh, the awesome vocoder, which is brand spanking new, as, as is the DSA. All right, so let's take a look at the DSA to start with. DSA is very, very cool. So let's edit this and you can see it. Here it is. Hang on, I just need to pull it down just a little bit. And um, what we'll do is we'll solo up the vocal on this um, on this song here, and you'll get to see a bit of what this does. So it's pretty simple. You have a frequency knob here, and you can listen to the frequency, the key listen, and you can also solo the sibilant as well, so that you can make sure that you're in the right spot for the sibilant whatever um, frequency that happens to be. In this case, it's roundabout uh, 7.6 kilohertz um, for uh, this particular vocal track. Now, this is me singing. I don't really, I actually have a very slight lisp, so it, the S's don't come through particularly clear, um, but this is more or less where they are. And then you just pull back this S reduction knob here uh, to get the amount of reduction that you want. And then there are two shapes, there's narrow and there's wide. Narrow is going to give you much more kind of a fine tuned um, bandwidth, a narrower bandwidth um, for which the vocoder is, the vocoder, the de is going to operate. I've got the vocoder on my brain. I've been playing with it all day. <laughs> so, um, and then the wide one is much, much wider, broader bandwidth. So if you want to kind of be a little bit more kind of gentle, you can. And then you've got full range and you've got gentle. Gentle will basically max out at 6 dB of uh, gain reduction, whereas you've got the full range in the full. So if you want to kind of just do a little bit of gentle tapping down on some S's, uh, you can do that with the gentle setting. I've got it on narrow and full here and we can exaggerate it so you can see kind of what this does. Everything's against me, my back against the wall. Holding all the worst cards I feel two feet tall. I'll stand and shout no holding back. Okay, now let's just listen to the sibilant. So that tells us that we're pretty much in the right ballpark. I could probably finesse this a little bit further. Um, but as you can see, when I started out, it was way too much. And it made the vocal very, very muddy and very, very dark quite quickly. And um, uh, there was much more of a lisp than there is naturally present anyway. So that's the de -esser. It's very straightforward, very simple to use. And I'm very, very thankful that we now have one native to Studio One. I've been using a Plugin Alliance um, de for quite a long time, um, which is actually very, very good. Um, but this one is just as good. So I really, to be honest, my personal opinion, I don't need to use a third party de anymore. Um, this is going to do pretty much exactly what I need um, for what I use de for. For my personal voice, I don't need it. Um, but other artists and also I, I work with voiceover artists and audiobook people. And some of them really have pronounced S's, so I can use this just as well as I can my third party one. So there you go. That is the de in a nutshell. Let's move on to the Pro EQ. I will move this bad boy up. Now, you will notice that we have some extra controls for each of these five bands here. Um, you don't have these controls for the low, co low cut um, or high cut filters. Um, but on the other bands, you have these additional controls. So we have D for dynamic mode, which turns the um, 
uh, the Pro EQ into a dynamic EQ, but you can also solo frequency bands as well, um, according to how you have this already set. So I've got this already set. So let's say, for example, um, let's find one that I'm doing quite steep. Let's, let's do this one. So if I press S here, you can see that um, I have this, and if I, if I don't have to click and hold it, I can release it, and then I can make some minor adjustments. So let's go back to here. Whoa. Cuts have failed to So there, I just moved that one just along a little bit, and actually I think I found the better spot for this, and um, I can pull that back just a little bit more. Um, so the soloing is going to be very, very handy. And then of course the dynamic mode. Dynamic mode is very cool. So let's go again up to, um, uh, which one should we go for? Let's go for this one up here. Um, this one here. So that's going to be this high mid one here. And what we'll do is we'll put this into dynamic mode. Everything's against me, my back against the wall. Holding all the words, cards I feel. Now, what you'll notice immediately is with this threshold kind of pulled back like it is, we're getting this to compress at this particular point. Um, but if I put the, the range, the dynamic range, the other way, it should have the opposite effect. Still two feet tall. I'll stand and shout no holding back. You see it jumping up instead of down. So this works like um, an upward compressor instead. And then we can, of course, go back to compression mode. Let's go back to the start of that verse. Everything's against me, my back against the wall. So that's pretty cool. And it just taps down or taps up whichever frequency band you want. So it's great. It's a great addition to the Pro EQ, working as uh, getting it to work as a dynamic EQ. So uh, this is really, really cool. All right, so let's move on to probably my favorite. <laughs> I'll be really honest. Let's go to this song here. And uh, this song is almost completely blank. I have a voice track here, and I also have Mai Tai. And I kind of alluded to this in the overview video. If you have not seen that yet, go and watch that, because that is an overview of the entirety well, not the entirety, but basically the, the, the main highlights, as far as I'm concerned, of Studio One Six. I've gone through quite a few of the new features there. Um, so go and check that out if you haven't already. And what I am doing is I have the vocoder on the voice track here. So if we open that, here is the vocoder. And... Um, I haven't really played around too terribly much with much of the controls, particularly. Um, but you want to make sure that you have it in this sidechain mode here. Um, because what we're going to do is we are going to use the sidechain feature in Vocoder um, so that um, we have the... Let's, let's just open this up. So we have the output of Mai Tai routed through here. So we're receiving the output of Mai Tai into the vocoder, which means um, it will sound really, really cool like this. So if I play that note there, now you can hear that um, my voice is just quite simply the vocoder and uh, I'm just playing this one note on the Mai Tai. 
but we can also do chords like this, like this, like this, like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. And what is very cool is that you don't even have to sing the note. You can just speak the note and um, it will respond to your input. So e, um, if I just try and play notes with my voice, and I'm going to basically play notes in time to the rhythm of my speech if I can. I, I've not tried this before, so this will be fun. And let's see if we can make a melody line. So let's go like this. Let's go like this and play some notes, and play some notes. It really is very cool indeed. I'm not really trying to sing the notes, I'm just trying to play the notes on the keyboard in time with what I say. So it really is quite cool. And that was, that was definitely a wrong note, that should have been there. And I can go artificially higher than I normally can. So, um, I can make a really interesting melody. But I can also make some really interesting chords as well. Like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, like this. So there's lots that you can do with this. And you can change the presets to, um, uh, to get some different sounds, like we could select this one here like this. And this has a distinctive sound that you may or may not like too terribly much. It makes me sound a little bit nasally to be honest. But there it is. There it is. So, uh, this is something that you could probably have endless amounts of fun with. Uh, to be honest, and in fact, pretty much when I first um, got into using the vocoder, I did have a little bit too much fun, as I'm going to show you now, if you'll allow me to be just a little bit indulgent for a moment. Uh, I went ahead and created um, a song, basically just improvising as I went, and then I just added some extra tracks just to make it a little bit more entertaining. So, uh, check this out. I think you get the idea. <laughs> and they're kind of still talking into the vocoder. Um, but yeah, I think you get the idea. Uh, it's lots and lots of fun. Um, just basically playing chords on the Mai Tai and then speaking into the vocoder. And uh, it worked really quite well. Hang on, let's, let's just uh, turn these off. There we go. Uh, so you shouldn't be able to hear those anymore. All right, so there we have it. Those are the three new uh, additions to Studio One Six in the plugin department. I recommend you get the vocoder going, and uh, I'm really looking forward to hearing what you guys come up with. Um, so, if you are members of Personosphere, go and post all of your experiments in the community section, and uh, I look forward to checking out what you guys come up with. Um, if you're not, um, that's okay too. There's the Studio One Sessions group on Facebook, and I'm sure that they will let you post at least some of your um, creations over there as well. All right, so until then, I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.